Option Z, OWL 8.3 Science Notebook if you need some help. Um, so first of all, we're going to start off um, by looking at the before you read information and the key concepts. So it says before you read, do you agree or disagree? Okay, so before you're going to fill in either an A or a D in these two boxes. So the statements are losing electrons can make some atoms more chemically stable. So do you agree or disagree? And then metals are good conductors because they tend to hold on to their valence electrons very tightly. Okay, so metals are good conductors because they tend to hold on to their, very, their valence electrons very tightly. Okay, and our key concepts for this reading are what is an ionic compound and then how do metallic bonds differ from covalent and ionic bonds. Okay, so um, once you've answered those two, let's move on to um, the reading. Now, it asks you to write a quiz, which isn't a bad idea. You could write the quiz okay, um, and use it as your own um, kind of study tool before we take our quiz on this material. Okay, so let's read about understanding ions. As you read in lesson two, the atoms of two or more nonmetals form compounds by sharing valence electrons. However, when a metal and a nonmetal bond, they do not share electrons. Instead, one or more valence electrons transfers from the metal to the nonmetal. After electrons transfer, the atoms bond and form a chemically stable compound. Transferring valence electrons results in atoms with the same number of valence electrons as a noble gas, which is the ideal situation. When an atom gains or loses valence electrons, it becomes an ion. Okay, so they're saying this happens between okay, a metal and a nonmetal. Okay, so when we have a metal and a nonmetal, okay, atoms will either gain or lose valence electrons. So an ion is an atom that is no longer electrically neutral because it has lost or gained valence electrons. Remember, valence electrons are electrons that are in the outermost shell. Because electrons have a negative charge, gaining or losing an electron changes the overall charge of the atom. An atom that loses valence electrons um, becomes an ion with a positive charge. This is because the at, after the atom loses an electron, the atom has more protons than electrons. The atom is now an ion with a positive charge. An atom that gains valence electrons because becomes an ion with a negative charge. This is because the number of protons is now less than the number of electrons. Okay, so the question over here says, why does an atom that gains an electron become an ion with a negative charge, right? Because that seems counterintuitive. If you're gaining something, why do you become negative? Okay, and the reason why it becomes negative when it gains electrons is because then there are more negatively charged electrons than positively charged protons. Okay, losing valence electrons. Okay, um, sodium is a metal. Its atomic number is 11. This means that sodium has 11 protons and 11 electrons. Sodium is in group one on the periodic table. Therefore, sodium atoms have one valence electron and are chemically unstable. Metal, metal atoms such as sodium become more stable when they lose valence electrons and form a chemical bond with a non-metal, okay, something that's on the right-hand side of the periodic table. The figure below describes the process of losing and gaining valence electrons. When, so, when a sodium atom loses one valence electron, the electrons in the next lower energy level become the new valence electrons. Okay, so essentially, we've got some electrons in this outermost shell, the valence electrons. Sodium has one. If it loses that one, now the next shell in is actually the outermost shell, and that shell is full. Um, the sodium atom then has eight valence electrons, the same as the noble gas neon. Sodium, the sodium ion, really not atom, is chemically stable when it does that. Gaining valence electrons. In lesson two, you learn that nonmetal atoms can share valence electrons with other nonmetals. Okay, so when you share electrons, you form what's called a covalent bond. And we didn't actually do lesson two, um, but we will talk about valence electrons um, or covalent bonding more next week. Okay, um, nonmetal atoms can also gain valence electrons from metals. Either way, they achieve the electron arrangement of a noble gas. 
the nonmetal chlorine has the atomic number of 17. Chlorine atoms have seven valence electrons, as shown in the figure below. So we'll look down below in a second. If a chlorine atom gains one valence electron, it will have eight valence electrons. It will then have the same number as the stable noble gas argon. Okay, so that's what these atoms are trying to do. If they're not in that last column, that means that the number of valence electrons they have doesn't fill their outer shell. And so they're either going to gain or lose electrons to become like one of the noble gases. Okay, so when sodium, a sodium atom loses a valence electron, okay, so that's what's being shown here. There's one valence electron here. Okay, it's a neutral atom, but it's unstable. It's unhappy having only one electron in that outermost shell. Okay, um, the sodium atom will lose that valence electron, right? So this electron is now gone. Okay, it lost that valence electron, and now the outermost shell has eight valence electrons, okay, because the third shell is now empty. Okay, um, and now it is a happy ion with a positive charge, okay? And it's positively charged because there are more protons than there are electrons, okay? When a chlorine atom gains a valence electron, okay, and where's it gaining it from? It could gain that one electron, okay, from sodium, okay? When it gains a valence electron, it becomes a negatively charged ion shown by a negative sign, okay? So here's chlorine. Chlorine has seven valence electrons in this third shell. It really wants eight to be like a noble gas, so it's going to steal. It's going to take one of one of the valence electrons potentially from sodium, okay? Um, so that it goes from being a neutral, unstable atom to a negatively charged ion, but one that is stable because now this third shell is full with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valence electrons. Okay. Um. So over here we are predicting are atoms of the group 16 elements more likely to gain or lose valence electrons? Okay, so group 16, if we look on the periodic table, okay, group 16 has six valence electrons, six valence electrons. Okay, um, they either are gonna gain or lose electrons okay, to become like one of the noble gases. Okay, so that means they can either go down and lose those six valence electrons, or they can try to gain some more electrons okay, to get up to eight. And the question is really, what are they closer to? Are they closer to going down to zero and losing the outer shell? Or are they closer to grabbing some extra electrons okay, um, and adding on to their valence electrons? Okay, well, if they have six, so they're either gonna to try to get to zero by losing electrons, or they're gonna to try to gain electrons and get up to eight valence electrons. Okay, well, what are they closer to? Okay, well, it would only take eight more electrons okay, to get them to a noble gas configuration or to have the number of valence electrons as a noble gas. So that's a lot easier than losing six of their electrons. Okay, so that means that that atom would try to gain two more valence electrons by forming bonds with other atoms. Question number three, what would an ion's charge be if it gained two electrons? Okay, remember that normally the charge is neutral, no charge. And it's neutral because the protons and the neutrons equal numbers of them, so the positive charges and the negative charges balance out. Okay, if we gain two electrons, electrons are negatively charged. There's now more negatives than there are positives, okay? So we're tipping the scale, okay? Um, and we are creating an ion that has a negative charge because it has two more negatively charged particles. Um, and the charge is actually two minus or minus two. Okay, atoms are electrically neutral because they have the same number of protons and electrons. Once an atom gains or loses an electron, it becomes a charged ion. For this example, the atomic number for nitrogen is seven. This means that nitrogen has seven protons, seven electrons. It is electrically ne neutral. When forming an ionic bond, nitrogen gains three electrons. 
okay, then the nitrogen ion has 10. To determine the charge, okay, you subtract the number of electrons from the number of protons. Okay, so subtract electrons from protons. Okay, so it has seven protons. You subtract the 10 electrons, and that gives you a negative three charge. Okay, um, and that, so nitro, the nitrogen ion has a negative three charge, and it is written as you take the symbol N, and then you have a superscript three minus. So you get the charge there on the end. All right. Um, an atom's atomic radius is measured in picometers, one trillion times smaller than a meter. When an atom becomes an ion, its radius either increases or decreases, right? So we're either making the shell or the outside of the atom larger or we're making it smaller, okay? So what does the percentage, by what percentage does the radius change as the ion forms? Okay, so this kind of gives us our steps. Subtract the ion's radius from the atom's radius. Okay, so subtract, divide the difference by the atom's radius. So you take the difference and then you divide it by the atom's radius, 186 in this case, okay, and then multiply by 100, and that gives you a percentage. Okay, um, so um, again, for this math problem, instead of 102 and 186, right, you take the ion down here for oxygen, okay, so you take 140 minus a um, the atom's radius and the atom's radius is 73 okay um you take that difference and you're going to divide by the atom's radius so you'll divide by 73 okay um and then multiply the number by 100. okay so that's how you calculate the percentage hey okay, what holds ionic compounds together so let's read about that Okay, um, ionic bonds, electron transfer. And recall that metal atoms lose valence electrons and non-metals gain. When forming a, a chemical bond, the non-metal atoms gain um, electrons lost by the metals. Okay, so sodium chloride or salt, a sodium atom loses one valence electron. The electron is transferred to chlorine. The sodium atom is now a positively charged ion. Chlorine is a negatively charged ion. These ions attract. Remember, opposite charges attract, and they form a stable chemical compound. Okay, um, so we see sodium ion, chlorine ion. Okay, they combine okay, to form sodium chloride. Ionic compounds um, are the ions of ionic, ionic compounds are strongly attracted to each other. As a result, ionic compounds are usually solid and brittle. They usually have a relatively high melting and boiling point. Water that contains dissolved ionic compounds is a good conductor of electricity. This is because the electrical charges can be passed from ion to ion. So the electrical charges are passed from like the sodium ion and the chloride ion. Okay, um, recall that in a covalent bond, two or more non-metal atoms share electrons and form a molecule. Covalent compounds are made up of many molecules. However, when non-metal non ions bond to metal ions in an ionic compound, there are no molecules. Instead, there is a large collection of ions with opposite charges. The ions are all attracted to each other and are held together by ionic bonds. Okay, so what holds ionic compounds together? Okay, um, that's what we've got right here. Instead of a large collection of, um, instead there is a large collection of ions attracted with opposite charges. The uh, all of the ions are attracted to each other and they're held together by ionic bonds. Okay, metallic bonding. Recall that metal atoms typically lose valence electrons. Metal atoms form compounds when combining. When, com yeah. Metal atoms form compounds with one another by combining or pooling their valence electrons. A metallic bond forms when many metal atoms share their pooled valence electrons. In aluminum, atoms lose their valence electrons and become positive ions. The negatively charged valence electrons move from ion to ion. The valence electrons in metals do not bond to one atom. Instead, they form like a sea of electrons. Okay, that kind of floats around the positive ions. Okay, how do metal atoms bond with one another? Okay, they form metallic bonds where metal atoms share their pooled valence electrons. 
Okay, metal metallic compounds and their properties. Metals are good conductors of thermal energy or heat and electricity. Because the valence electrons can move from ion to ion, they easily conduct an electric charge. When a metal is hammered into a sheet or drawn into a wire, it doesn't break. Okay, that means that metals are malleable. Metal ions can slide past one another in an electron C and move into new positions. As a result, hey, many metals are shiny because the valence electrons in the, on the surface interact with light. And the table below is going to compare your covalent, ionic, and metallic bonds. Okay, um, so it says circle the bond that results in a compound that conducts thermal energy well. Okay, um, and so what conducts thermal energy well? That would be metals, good conductors of thermal energy or heat and electricity. Okay, so you just need to circle. Okay, and then I would go through and read each of these and you might even um, create like a little um, cheat sheet of these kind of um, differences so you can see the differences between the different types of atoms or different types of um, bonds, okay, covalent, ionic, and metallic. Um, here's a glossary of some of our key terms. Okay, you're going to write that out, and then you're going to fill in this graphic organizer. Okay, um, you've got um, words that you're going to use up here at the top, so you put those words where you feel like they belong here. And again, this might be a good thing to print out or write out on a sheet of paper so you have it for a quiz um, later on. Hope that helps you guys, and have a great day.